Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a laser gun on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is hop right on into the game. And if we equip our laser gun, as you'll see, we have the zombie coming at us. And every time we click, it'll shoot the zombie and he loses health. Okay, so now that you know what this script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that we need is actually a gun model. We need to make a gun. Uh, so I'm just going to create a new part under workspace. Uh, I'm going to scale it down just a little bit and I'll make it just, I'm going to make a handle. This will be a very basic gun. You can make the gun however advanced or however simple you like. Um, but I'm not the best builder, so I'm just going to make something nice and small like this. Um, and then I'm going to create a new tool under workspace by clicking the plus and then adding a tool. And I'm going to name the tool laser gun. And then all I'm going to do is grab these two parts that I created, so the handle and then the nozzle, and then I'm just going to throw it right in there. Uh, and we just have to name this part right here, we have to name it handle in order for the Roblox to actually be able to know that's where we grip onto with our character. Uh, and then I'm just going to name this part, this is going to be the front of the gun. Uh, and then you can use whatever gun model you want, but whatever it is, if you want this script to work, you have to have a piece in it named tip. And this is where the laser is actually going to get fired out from, it's going to get fired out from the tip. So you want to create a new part, name it tip, and then just have it on the front um, of your gun. Uh, from here what we're going to do is I'm just going to actually weld these parts together so that like the tip doesn't fall off and the front doesn't fall off. I'm going to weld both of these to the handle. So all I'm going to do is click plus on the both of the objects and I'm just going to create a weld constraint in each of them and then we're going to set the part zero of the weld constraint to the object itself and then part one to the handle so that the, everything stays together because we don't want this to be anchored or else it'll fling the player across the map and that would not be good. So this is our gun, we actually have the model now uh, and I'm just gonna change the color to make it a little bit nicer because it doesn't look too nice right now. Uh, maybe if I said it's like a purple color, I think that looks kinda cool. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is create a new script underneath the laser gun. It'll be a local script because we need to be able to get the local player. Uh, and this is what's actually going to do the shooting. This is how we're going to take damage. This is how we're going to get when the player clicks. All that is going to be done in this local script. Um, and I'm just going to name the script laser gun script, but you can name it whatever you like. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is get access to the debris service. Uh, and all this does is it allows us to basically put our laser away when, after we're done. So after we shoot the laser, we want it to disappear. Uh, and we just put it in the debris service. So to do that, I'm going to say local debris equals game colon get service debris, just like that. Uh, and then the next line, we're actually going to get a reference to the, uh, the laser gun and the tip inside of the laser gun. So I'll say local laser gun equals script.parent because write script.parent, that's the laser gun. And then I'll say local tip equals laser gun dot tip because the tip is this object right here that we created on the front of our gun. Now what I'll do is I'll get a reference to the player, character, and the player's mouse. Not the player's mouse, but I'll get reference to the player and the character. So I'll say, because this is a local script, we can say local player equals game.players.localplayer. And we have all the reference to all the player objects from there. Uh, and then I'll get the character from that player. So local character equals player.character. Uh, and then from there we just have one more variable that we have to set up up top and that is the gun damage variable. So this is however much damage you want your gun to give, your laser gun to give to whatever you shoot. This is what that variable is equal to. So if you want it to give 30 damage, you say 30. If you want it to do 100 damage, you do 100. Whatever you want, you just put that right inside this variable. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to get when the laser gun is equipped because uh, this is how we actually get access to the player's mouse. So we'll say laser gun dot equipped and we'll connect that to a function and then inside of that function we can get the mouse right here. It passes in that parameter and we'll enter and see it'll close it off just like that. Uh, and now we need to get when the player clicks. So we could either do when the player puts their mouse down and then puts it up when they click or we can do just when they put it down. So I'm going to do just when they click their mouse button one down. So I'll say mouse stop button one down and then we'll connect that to a function so whenever they click their mouse down the code inside of here is going to run 
Uh, so now this is a little bit more complex from here on, but if you just follow along, or you can even copy the code from the description if you'd like, um, so just follow along the best you can, and if you want to, you can always go and insert the model in the end, but it's always good to try. Um, so I'll say local laser equals ray dot new, and then we're going to say basically, so array, it just creates like an invisible object, and that's like a path type thing um, in a certain direction. So we're going to say, so tip.cframe, that's where the ray is going to come out of. So tip.cframe.p, that's the position that the ray comes out of. Um, and then we're going to put a comma, because the second argument, right, is the vector 3 direction. And the way we're going to do that is we're basically going to say, we're going to get the mouse hit position, and then we're going to subtract the tip C frame, and then we're going to get the unit of that and multiply it by 300 so it can go out for 300 studs. So that sounds a little bit confusing, but all you have to do is write the code like this. So we're just going to say mouse.hit.p minus tip.cframe.p dot unit times 3000, or 300. And it'll go out 300 studs in whatever direction. Uh, from here, we actually want to get the position that the laser hits and the part that it hits. So in this case, it's probably going to hit like a foot or a leg or something like that. And then we'll get the position of that as well. Uh, and we'll store it in these two variables. So we'll say local hit part, comma, hit position, we're defining two variables here, equals game.workspace, and then we're going to use the find part on ray method of workspace. Uh, and then we're going to pass in our laser, so our ray that we created. Uh, and then we'll say character as the second argument, and then false, and then true. Uh, from here, what we're going to do is actually, so right now we have the laser. This is so cool. Um, but we don't even, we don't have anything to actually display the laser. It doesn't look like anything. So we could continue writing the code, but I actually want to have a visual display. We, we want to have that part that kind of comes out and makes that, you know, that cool look of the green beam that comes out of the gun. Uh, so what I'm going to say is local laser beam equals instance.new part. I always put it as a string, my bad. And we'll just create that underneath game.workspace. And it'll just create a new part. Uh, and then we want to set the brick color to whatever color we want the beam to be. So laser beam dot brick color equals, and I want mine to be uh, bright green, so I'm just going to say brick color dot new and bright, and it should kind of autofill here. Yep. Uh, and then I'll say laser beam dot form factor. We want to set the form factor of this. Not form factor, my bad form factor. Equals custom. Uh, and then I'll say the next thing we want the material to be neon uh, for my laser gun. You can set the material to whatever you'd like. So I'm just going to say laser beam dot material equals neon. And then I want to set the transparency too. I don't want this to be 100% opaque. I want people to be able to see through it a little bit uh, just for that extra effect. So I'm going to say laser beam dot transparency equals 0.25. We want to anchor this like this so anchored equals true and we want to set can collide equal to false so that it doesn't stop the player from actually walking so we'll just say laser beam dot can collide equals false so this sets up the laser beam but right now it's not positioned anywhere and it's not sized anywhere so we actually need to set it so it follows the path of that ray that we created that laser ray that we created before so let's make a variable we're gonna call it laser distance and this basis, basically all this is going to say is going to be how long the laser goes. Uh, and the way we calculate that is we say tip.cframe.p, so the position of our tip of our gun, and then minus hit position, right, dot magnitude. So that just gets the distance. So let's say our gun is right here, and then our mouse hits right here. It's going to get the, dis the difference of the distance in between here. Um, from there, we just want to set the size to that laser distance. So we'll say laser beam dot size equals vector 3, because all sizes are done in vectors. Uh, and then we'll say 0.3 on the x-axis and 0.3 on the y-axis. 
you can set this to whatever you want if you want a thinner laser or a thicker laser. Uh, and then this last parameter is really important is the laser distance that we just defined. And that'll just say it'll go for however long, however far you clicked or however far away the part is that you actually clicked on. Um, from there, we just need to set the C frame. So laser beam dot C frame, just so we position it and orient it the right way, equals C frame dot new. And then we'll say tip inside here, say tip dot C frame dot P. So the position of the tip, comma hit position, right? Because we want to get it to go in between those. Uh, and then we'll multiply that by new C frame. So C frame dot new. And we'll say zero on the X, zero on the Y, and then negative laser distance on the Z. Uh, from there, so what we want to do is add this to the debris service. So after, the way the debris service works is if we add a part to it, after however many seconds we put in the second argument, that part goes to the debris service. So we're just going to say debris colon add item, and then we're going to pass in our object first. So we're going to pass in the laser beam. Uh, and then our second parameter is the amount of time we want to wait. So if you want it to maybe wait one second before the laser beam goes away, you can set this value to one, but I'm just going to set it to 0.1 because uh, I thought that wound up looking pretty cool. Uh, and now we're actually going to subtract the health from the player. If like, if we hit a player, we want to check that and then we'll subtract the health. So we're going to say if hit part. So if we hit anything, if we hit a base plate, if we hit a banana, if we hit a squirrel, Anything that we hit, we want to just, it'll, this will run if we hit anything. Um, and then from there, we're going to say local hit humanoid. So the humanoid of the hit part. So assuming right now, we're just kind of assuming that this is a character that it, it hit, um, like another player in the game, but we can check that later. Um, so right now, we're just going to say local hit humanoid equals hit part, oops, like this, dot parent colon find first child humanoid so if it's like a right leg the parent of the right leg has a humanoid value and that's how we know it's an actual player um, and we want to check because sometimes it can actually be two parents above not just one so like maybe if you hit like I don't know maybe if you hit some like maybe if you hit like the face or you hit something in the head uh, like another part underneath of the player's head then it'd be parent dot parent that would be the character so we'll say if not humanoid, so if we weren't able to find it, if we weren't able to find it in hit part dot parent, then we'll say hit humanoid equals hit part dot parent dot parent colon find first child humanoid. So if it if there is something there, if we can find a humanoid, then it'll set it. Otherwise it won't. Uh, and then from there all we have to do is check to make sure we actually found it, check to make sure there is a humanoid, we're hitting a player. So the way we do that is just say, if hit humanoid, then, so at this point we know it's a player, we know that they actually hit the player, um, another player in the game, so we want to take damage from that, or it could be an NPC as well, not just a player. Um, so we take the damage just by saying, hit humanoid, colon, take damage, and then we're going to pass in, because I remember we created this earlier, this gun damage variable. We could either specify a number here, but I want to change it up top when we want to change our stuff, so I'm just going to pass in gun damage. Uh, and that actually should be it. If we go into the game, actually let's put this first before we do that, let's put this laser gun under starter pack, so it gives the gun as soon as the player joins the game. You could always make a script too that gives it after they press a button or something like that. I'll have a tool giver video sometime later on. Um, but for now, I'm just going to put it under starter pack, uh, and I'm just going to grab a zombie model. And be anything that has a humanoid, this will work. This gun will actually shoot and be able to kill. Uh, you could always modify that so it only does players, but for now, we're just going to do anything with the humanoid. Uh, and if we go in, we can actually test this gun out. So the zombie's coming at us, oh no, but luckily we have our laser gun. And it looks like I actually messed up the rotation. You guys can play around with the rotation and make it look right. Um, so mine's sideways right now, but we can change that later on. Uh, and then if we click, as you'll see, it'll kill the zombie. Just like that. Nice and easy. So, kill the zombie. Goodbye, zombie. So this is a cool script to add if you have like a galactic game or you're doing laser tag or anything where you need some kind of gun, but you don't want it to be too violent, you can use a laser gun. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. 
As always, I'll have the Pastebin link with the code and the Roblox model link with everything shown in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.